Hi, this is Sean. Welcome back to another edition of Club Fed True Stories. Uh, today I'm going to talk about prison politics at a camp. Uh, yes, we have some. Nothing like a penitentiary. Um, before I get started, please hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the notifications, ring that bell, share this video, help me get subscribers. Uh, I'm trying to get a thousand subscribers and I can go live, get monetized, all that stuff. I do in these videos to help out the guy who's facing federal prison time, uh, the white collar guy or the drug dealer guy that's nonviolent and is going to end up in a camp or a low. Uh, so like I say in all my videos, if you're going to a camp or, or a low, you don't have to join a gang. You're not going to be anybody's bitch. You're not going to beat up. Get beat up unless you deserve it and you're an asshole. Uh, although fights happen, but no, I've never seen anybody get shanked. I've never even seen a shank at a camp. Uh, there's so many weapons around there. If you wanted to kill somebody, it'd be the easiest thing to do in a camp. Uh, so today I'm talking about prison politics and camps. So uh, the, the the big, big thing that I've noticed between a camp and, uh, and a low uh, as compared to a medium and a penitentiary and state prisons. So uh, there's no paperwork. You don't need to show paperwork. Nobody cares. Nobody not wants to see it. Uh, paperwork. What's that? So. If you go to a medium or penitentiary, what I understand, the first thing they ask you uh, is to see your paperwork. So they want to check to see if you're a pedophile. Uh, there's no pedophiles allowed at a camp. The lows, I understand, 50, 60, 70% pedophiles. And, and you don't really hear this. Uh, uh, a lot of these prison consultants won't tell you that about a low because I think half their customers might be pedophiles and they don't want to scare people away. I'm so glad I didn't go to a low. Because that's uh, one person I, I, I would shank. I uh, can't stand pedophiles. Don't want nothing to do with them. Don't want to know them. Don't want to hear their story. Uh, so, uh, and, and the other reason they want to see your paperwork is they want to make sure you're not a snitch. So, uh, uh, here's my thing with the paperwork. So, so I, I was what they call a leader. So, everybody, I had like nine co-defendants. And I ended up with five that did prison time. The other four... I know they snitched on me, uh, so you know I had nobody to tell on because I was the top guy. I was the mastermind. I, I did wire fraud. I got a 52-month sentence for wire fraud. Uh, I did tax returns for homeless people and my tweaker buddies and drug addicts, and I lied on the tax forms. And I got them all four or five thousand dollars, going back three years in refunds. I took a 20 percent. I owe the government $1.7 million. The government wants all the refunds back. So they all get to keep their refunds, and I have to pay the government back. It is what it is. I committed the crime. Uh, I have to pay this restitution. It's going to take me the rest of my life. Maybe some of the co defendants will pay it off. Um, I understand they're going over trying to get some of the people to uh, pay their tax refunds back, but uh, I doubt that's ever going to get paid off. Um, so I. I had nobody to snitch on, but even my girlfriend snitched on me. She even told me, the cops are just here, and uh, I told them everything about you. And, uh, you know, they want me to wear a wire, and I told them, uh, I don't want to wear the wire, but I told them everything about you. And, and maybe she did wear a wire, and I don't care, because, you know, I, I told them everything anyways. So uh, I cooperated. So cooperate means you tell your story, right? This is what I did. This is how I did it. And you're sitting there with a lawyer, and they're not going to charge you for anything extra, so they say. Um, but I had nobody to snitch on. But my, but my thing with the uh, people who, who snitch is, so let's say you're a, a gang member, and I'm out on the streets, and my girlfriend's cheating on me with you, the gang member, and you come over, and you stab my girlfriend, and you, and you jump in your car, and you run away, and you take off, and I see this. All right, I'm going to fucking call the cops on you, and I'm going to snitch, and I'm going to say I know who he is, that my girlfriend was cheating on me with this guy, and he stabbed her. Uh, if you're a pedophile, and you're molesting little children, and I see a neighbor across the street bringing little kids out of a van and sneaking them in his house and stuff, I'm going to snitch on that motherfucker. So, I don't know if you call that snitching or not, but wh where do you draw the line? Where do you fucking draw the line? You know, so for me, it's all about what you do when you get in prison, Okay. Uh, once you're there, don't be telling on people once you're there. And, and I think that's the rule at the camp is, so we got doctors, lawyers, stockbrokers, a lot of real estate fraud, mortgage brokers, all that. 
And, you know, their whole offices get busted. And I know they all snitch on each other. Doctors and lawyers will snitch on everybody. I mean, if you want to call it that. So informants, they'll testify against other people they worked with. And, uh, I mean, uh, it's way over half. It's probably 75% of people in the camp, even the drug dealers. Man, they'll turn on you, man. They're, they're turning in everybody because they don't want to do 20, 20 years in a penitentiary. But if they, you know, turn in a couple of their... Uh, drug dealers that are above them and stuff and they get time off and they end up getting three years at a camp and they get out you see it all the time in a camp but nobody really talks about it but but so nobody asks you to see your paperwork at a camp and even at a low but but you know so here's the thing it's what you do when you get there because i smoked cigarettes while i was in there i don't want nobody telling on me there's all kinds of alcohol in there there's cell phones uh you don't fucking snitch once you're there at a camp um, as far as politics go, there's no gangs or cars to, I hate that fucking word, car, what car are you in, you know, fuck a car, fuck a car, fuck your little gang, okay, at a prison camp, we don't fucking, you know, get real with it, man, fuck your paperwork and fuck your car, I'm sorry, you know what, grow the fuck up, you know what I mean, um, get that anger out of you, um, it's just not like that at a camp, you know, it, it's drug dealers and white collar guys, and, and it's, it's, it's non-violent criminals. That's what we are. We're not thugs. We're not all angry. You know, we don't have tattoos all over our face and horns and all that shit. We're not that kind of criminal. You're gonna see that a pen and a pen and a, and, a, and a medium. Glad I didn't go. Lock, throw me in the shoe the whole time. I I don't want to go to a fucking pen. I'd rather kill myself. But here, uh, so I did a 52 minute sentence. I got half of that uh, taken off for doing RDAP and some other programs. I got some other videos to talk about that. So there's a lot of do's and don'ts in a camp, uh, it's, and it's all about respect. All prisons are about respect, um, but you don't have to earn your respect in a camp and join a car. And when you, if somebody's one of your race is fighting at another race, you don't have to jump in and help him, or everybody's gonna beat you up. If somebody's getting beat up at a camp, it's usually because they owe money for gambling, or they maybe they told on somebody, told somebody that the guard that this guy has a cell phone. And his buddies found out, and they're gonna they're gonna lump you. They're gonna lump you really bad. You get bloody, and they're gonna fucking sock three or four of them will take you in the bathroom and beat the fuck out of you. And then it's smashed. And then it's smashed. Whether the guy fights back or not, or if he takes it like a man, or he goes, that doesn't matter in the camp. You just take your fucking beating. And I've I've seen wimpy guys get beat up, and I've seen tough guys get beat up. And then that's it. It's smashed. Um, and you don't have to prove yourself. You just you take your beating and fucking don't be telling on people with a cell phone. Uh, camps got at least probably half the people in the camp got a cell phone. They cost about 300 bucks. Guards do not bring them in. They're all brought in from the road. We'd have no fences. So everything's dropped off at the side of the road. At night, they bring in these duffel bags. Check out my other videos. It talks about them. So, so the first thing, the first thing at, at a camp is the do's and the don'ts. So it's okay to ask somebody how much time you got. When do you get out? How long are you in in here for? But what you don't want to do, you don't want to ask them what their crime was. What did you do? You wait for them to tell you at their own time, at their own pace, when they feel comfortable. Although guys will come up, what the fuck are you in here for? And usually they're not going to get an answer. Another thing, you don't shake hands. Uh... White people like to shake each other's hands. That's kind of a thing we do. But in prison, you don't shake someone's hands. You fist bump them. But it, you do. Here's the rule. When you first get there and you're meeting people the first day, the first week, you can shake their hand for the first time. And then the day you leave, you shake their hand for the last time. In between, it's fist bumps. Um, so we do have some segregation. So there's TV rooms that are... There, you got a white TV room, a black TV room. We we had a te I was in Florence, Colorado, so we had a Texas TV room, which is mainly the Mexicans from Texas. Um, and then you had a Paisa TV room. Uh, you had a others TV room. We had an RDAP TV room, so anybody in RDAP can go in there. And they had a room called the Geeks and the Freaks. So this was to get the gay guys and the lawyers and the stockbrokers and the kind of the white collar. And I asked them what the geek was, and they go, well, you know. Like a Trekkie, I go, oh yeah, I'm a Trekkie, I watch Star Trek, they go, okay, well, you can come in here, if you can ha handle the gay guys, I don't really have a problem with gay guys, the pedophiles I fucking do, um, so, uh, and then at the chow halls, so you got 
one half was pretty much all white at our at our chow hall. The other one was the blacks and the Mexicans and the others and stuff like that. But one time I sat down with Samoans because I had a Samoan buddy from San Francisco. I ate dinner with them once. Uh, I sat down with my uh, my buddy from uh, where the fuck was he from? I think I sat with Salty. He was from Jordan. Uh, he just called me the other day. Uh, all my friends are out. It's cool. I got like guys. We're all connecting up and. Because at a camp, you're going to do five or ten years. Some guys do two years. Um, most of the guys I knew are out. So I'm keep, I had a Russian buddy named Alex. I had my other buddy from Costa Rica named Jason. We, we've been talking. But he's a white guy, but he did some scams in, in Costa Rica. I had my other buddy, Chris, from Tonga, but he's also a white guy. But I had uh, A.K. Uzo, from, uh, he's Samoan from San Francisco, and... Uh, Kizzy, Kizzy Kalu. Oh, I shouldn't say their last name. Kizzy, I liked him. He, he was from uh, Nigeria. And uh, I got some pictures of him on, on some of my other videos. He was a character. And I hung out with him. You know, we talked all the time. South African black guy. Nobody nobody trips. I seen this one white dude was always hanging out with the black guys. And he said, I'm from a black neighborhood. So I, I hang with the blacks. And I go, well, man, I grew up in those bad neighborhoods too. But I don't like consider myself black. But anyways, and nobody tripped. Nobody tripped. Uh, so, uh, another thing is, when you're walking down the ranges, so we lived in cubicles, um, it's like little, little, like Orange is a New Black, little two-man cubicles, don't stop and stare in a cubicle at somebody, don't look and see what they're doing, just keep walking, don't look, um, what else do they got here, so, oh, uh, there's softball teams and basketball teams that are, like the Mexicans, the Paisas, uh, the others, uh, we had over 50 softball team, we had black softball teams, and, and they all play each other, and they have, you know, uh, like baseball season, so they have a whole season they do, it's amazing, I mean, they have first base coaches, third base coaches, umpires, I mean, they, the field's all done nice, like a real baseball stadium, and, uh, I mean, it's a hell of a ball game to watch, uh, so what else was I gonna talk about, uh, stare at the cubicles and basically that's it that's pretty much all our politics we're not like the hardcore you know penitentiaries and all that stuff and uh just when you get there don't be telling on your on people next to you we don't really care what you did before you got there we're, we know that you probably turned in half the office just to get some time off so um it's what you do after you get there and that's basically the politics at a at a club fed so subscribe, like, hit that bell. Thanks.